it's crazy that women have a higher poverty rate than men, when you consider how prevalent simp behavior is in American society. Unless you have a severe medical disability, how can you be poor as a woman? I mean, look at this bullshit. In my video titled Simps are bad, I said that men have been socially conditioned to hold women to lower standards than men are held to and are socially conditioned to give women preferential treatment. This story is another example of that. OnlyFans, has exploded in popularity during the pandemic. A content subscription platform that allows influencers and content creators to monetize their content, OnlyFans is primarily used by sex workers, who post racy content on their feeds in exchange for a monthly subscriber fee. The platform has grown exponentially over the past nine months, at one point seeing a 75% increase in signups, and many users have turned to the platform as a way to make ends meet. One of those people was Lauren Quay, 23, a New York-based paramedic who had turned to posting semi-racy content on the platform to supplement her income. She also reportedly worked as a hostess at a Korean restaurant, meaning that, like many Americans, she juggled multiple jobs in order to eke out a living. Instead of applauding her for her entrepreneurial spirit, however, or clucking over what a dismal reflection of the capitalistic economy it is that a healthcare worker needs to hold three jobs during a pandemic, New York Post reporters Susan Edelman and Dean Balzamini decided to dox Quay, possibly putting her job as a healthcare worker at risk and sparking massive uproar on social media. The story, headlined, NYC Medic helped make ends meet with racy OnlyFans side gig states that Quay was not secretive about her online exploits and had the audacity to include her last name in her social profile. After she was contacted by the Post, she deleted some photos on her OnlyFans page, which she told the Post she took down in the hopes that I won't lose my job in the middle of a pandemic and three weeks before Christmas, adding that her employer Senior Care had asked to meet with her after being contacted by the Post. On a GoFundMe page set up for her, Quay later wrote she was meeting with Senior Care today to discuss the status of her employment. A representative for Senior Care later told the Daily Beast that it was not planning to terminate Quay's employment. As OnlyFans has increased in popularity, it is not uncommon for tabloids to run stories about people in non-sex worker fields turning to the platform to help make ends meet. It is also not uncommon for healthcare professionals in particular to start an OnlyFans due to the dismal pay associated with the profession, as BuzzFeed previously reported. In April, an Indianapolis mechanic was fired from her job after her employer discovered she had an OnlyFans, a story that went viral after she tweeted about it. On her GoFundMe page, Quay summarized some of the context behind the article. She said she had started an OnlyFans to support herself during the pandemic. I did not ask my parents for help because I'm an adult and wanted to make my own money. I never once spoke of my pictures at work or used my job as a paramedic to solicit subscribers. I know I did nothing wrong and I have nothing to be ashamed of, she writes an adult. Oh okay. Sleazily soliciting money from complete strangers on the internet, is a much more mature thing to do than ask your own family for financial help. Quay also claims in her post that at the time the New York Post contacted her, she had moved down to her hometown in West Virginia to help her father after he suffered a heart attack. She also alleges that Bal's Amini called her employer and her mother to inform them that she had an OnlyFans while he was reporting out the story. Most of the quotes in that article are me defending myself to this reporter. He did not include that I begged him to remain anonymous, which was never agreed to, and that I told him my safety and job were going to be at risk if he posted this article, she writes. He truly did not care. 
Kwe and Amanda T.R., who is listed as the creator of the GoFundMe, did not immediately return requests for comment. She wrote she started the GoFundMe after posting to First Responder Enos, a Facebook group for fans of the podcast My Favorite Murder, and being inundated with shows of support and requests for donations. On social media, the New York Post story attracted widespread opprobrium, including from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who tweeted, Leave her alone. The actual scandalous headline here is medics in the United States need two jobs to survive. This opinion was echoed by commenters on Quay's GoFundMe, which has raised more than $23,000 as of press time. The fact that a healthcare worker needs a second job when a pandemic is ongoing is a scandal, says one donor. What kind of job they take isn't. Correction Monday. December 14, 2020, a version of this story contained a misspelling of Lauren Quay's name. This weekend, one of Quay's friends started a GoFundMe page in her name, writing that Quay had turned to sex work in order to support herself and her family and was now at risk of losing her job. Quay herself said as much to the post, telling the reporter she had taken down her only fans in the hopes that I won't lose my job in the middle of a pandemic and three weeks before Christmas. A representative for senior care EMS told the Daily Beast that Quay is still employed and it does not intend to let her go over this issue. We are asking for donations to help Lauren keep her freedoms of choice and expression to support herself during her legal battles against the newspaper and her fight to keep the job she loves, her friend wrote on the GoFundMe. In a little over a day, the page attracted more than 1,500 donors and raised $33,000, far above the stated goal of $5,000. So Senior Care already expressed that they weren't going to fire her yet people still donated thousands of dollars to her. Stay strong, one donor commented. The shame belongs to those who tried to shame you. You weren't hurting anyone. You were merely attempting to make a living because your job as a frontline healthcare worker, helping to save people's lives, doesn't pay enough which is the real shame. Another wrote simply, because no one should live in fear of some fragile toad of a man ruining your life for a non-story. When men who are of poor genetic quality, work full-time jobs that don't pay enough for all of our living expenses, we are called dusty and are told to take personal responsibility. We don't get tens of thousands of dollars handed to us by strangers on the internet. Even though, unlike women, we face unchecked employment discrimination that is based on our looks. Those of us unattractive men who are poor, are relentlessly disparaged by women and normie men. Where is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to tell those shitbags to leave us alone? Of course, social connections and lookism make normie men successful. But even attractive men don't have the level of privilege that women do. Victim blamers tell guys like me that we are poor because of the poor choices that we allegedly made. And it looks like initially, Lauren did not make the best choices that she could have made. If senior care EMS does not pay medics enough money to survive off of in NYC, why didn't she apply for a better paying job instead? It's not like she would have been turned down for it because of her height. But that's okay. Because Lauren didn't have to be a master at making good choices, in order for her to have financial prosperity in life. Because she had the help of simps and liberal women who felt sorry for her. OnlyFans and GoFundMe is not hard work. But the thousands of dollars that Lauren made from those accounts, was easy money. Must be nice.